Welcome to UCBO's Ask Fiscal Ticket Demo. This demo is one in a series of asynchronous staff training and continuous education. So the first thing we're gonna cover is just logging in to access the form. And in terms of submitting these tickets, it is really important that if you have questions to try to filter them through this form in our ticketing system. You can also email colleges at ucsd.edu if you don't wanna submit through the ticketing system form. And we're going to be having a specific fiscal only email coming soon. So when we get that email from ITS, we'll communicate that on so that your questions will go directly to the fiscal team and the other teams at the UCBO won't get notifications for them. But overall, the ticketing system really allows us to keep track of some multiple statistics um, that are helpful for our reporting and ensuring that we're meeting our target goals of turnaround. It also helps us compile all the information related to your questions in one place. And that really makes it more efficient um, in terms of research or referring back to old conversations that may have happened and gotten lost in an email. It also allows our team to be able to pick up your questions and your tickets. If the person that typically addresses your tickets is out sick, unexpectedly, or on vacation. And of course, this also ensures that your questions don't get lost since we transitioned to the new ESR systems in May of 2020. Our team gets about 200 notifications a day. So every so often a email can get accidentally deleted or sent to spam without us knowing, and we wanna avoid that. Now, in terms of the process, so the first thing you're gonna do is navigate to cboforms.ucsd.edu. And just something to note is that copying and pasting this link usually gives a feedback error. If that happens, just manually type in the cboforms.ucsd.edu and that should fix your issue. If it doesn't, um, make sure to submit a ticket to ITS our team does not help with troubleshooting on this particular website. Now, when you do navigate to that URL, you're gonna see the business systems login. So that's gonna be your login that starts with PV, and then it has the initial for your college. If you're seventh college, it starts with SEV. If you're eighth college, it's gonna start with EIG. Or if you're part of the CBO office, it'll start with the CBO. If you get locked out of this account, so that's three failed attempts, you would get your account resumed by emailing colleges at ucsd.edu. And if you want a temporary password because you've forgotten your password, make sure you note that in your request. If you log in, and you still don't have access, what you'll need to do is have your supervisor submit a ticket to ITS for staff portal. Your staff portal access or VAC um, for academic advising is tied to ITS to grant that access. UCBO does not do that. Now, after you successfully log in, you'll see this screen here. The second section, fiscal forms, is gonna be everything related to the fiscal team. And the particular form we're going over today is that first one, the Ask CBO Fiscal Form. And with the new system enhancement, when you click on that, it's going to pop you out to um, a ticket in services and support. And before we go over what that screenshot looks like, I just want to go over the most common uses for this Ask CBO Fiscal Form. So, of course, you can ask all of your questions related to fiscal and buying matters. We just ask that if you have multiple questions um, for different categories, such as PO, PCARD, et cetera, 
that you're breaking your questions out into different tickets. So you can lump all your PO questions together, but don't um, combine your PO and your PCARD questions in one ticket. And the reason for that is certain questions and areas of expertise go to different members of our team. And we wanna make sure that all of your questions can get worked on simultaneously instead of you waiting for the different team members um, of the fiscal team to cycle through one at a time. Now, uh, other uses for this form is to place your stamp orders. If you want stamps for student programming events, pay station codes for parking in the parking structures in the various parking lots on campus. If you have any requests related to the TEC and P card, and we'll go over some more specific requests later. If you have an honoraria payment, if you have any requests for budgets, um, and then if you need contracts to be signed, if you have feedback, so on and so forth. Now, um, the second part of this is going to be submitting the request. So this is what the pop-up window looks like. And if you notice, the title in this form is called Submit a Business Office Request. So this is still the Ask CBO Fiscal Ticket. The name is just different because we are using a standardized form for across campus. And on this form for that first field there, that says select the business office to process this request, you're going to choose the undergraduate college's business office or the USCPO in parentheses there. The unit name, you're going to select your college's unit name, regardless of what area your question or request is for. You'll always select the unit that you belong to. And then for category or assistance, you should choose fiscal slash travel. A notable call out is we do also have a section for DSA, HR, and programs. So you can submit tickets to those teams through this form as well. Just make sure you select the correct category for assistance. Then you have the subject of your message and then the please describe your issue or ask questions. And we're gonna go over what to put in each of those fields for the different specific requests we just covered. In terms of the subject, um, the subject that you list is going to be the header in the ticket, or it's going to be the subject line in the confirmation email you receive. So our recommendation is that you make sure that it's unique or detailed enough that if you need to go into the ticketing system later, it's easily searchable, especially if you have multiple questions or requests of the same type, you're going to want to be able to easily differentiate them from each other. So one of our examples here is instead of listing travel questions as your subject line, use instead travel questions for NOTA Conference 2023. And that'll help you in the future uh, to filter through your tickets. Now, we're going to go into the specific types of requests that aren't questions that you can submit. So specifically, if you're ordering stamps, note that the turnaround time for this is approximately three weeks. So in that body description, of your issue request question, you're going to type in the business purpose for your event. And if you need some guidance on business purposes, you can go look at our Confluence page um, that has all of the details and requirements for business purposes. The second thing you're going to list is your COA. Your COA can be found on your unit's COA reference guide. If you don't have it shared with you, you can reach out to your fiscal contact and they can assist you with getting you added to that guide. And then likewise, if you have a COA that's missing, they can assist you with that as well. The third thing you're going to need is when do you need your stamps by? So if you're having a student programming event, for example, you're sending letters to veterans and you want the students to be able to mail them out on their own. So you want to provide them with stamps. 
you need to let us know what the date of that program is. And then the last thing is you just need to choose the option of stamps that you want to order. These are the four options that we have available at the UCBO to order. Now, in terms of pay station coats, please note that the minimum turnaround for this is about one week. For um, a list of appropriate expenditures and business purposes for pay station codes, you can always check out our Confluence page titled Transportation. But typically, um, the only valid business purposes for this is vendors or performers coming to campus to perform a service for an event. If you are paying a vendor via a PO, a PA, honoraria, et cetera, and your concern isn't them not being able to find parking, in which instead you would reserve a parking space, and it's just really covering that expenditure, um, campus does prefer that they add or build in that expense to your invoice instead of us ordering them pay station codes one-on-one. -on -one. You can also get pay station codes for meeting guests who are not campus employees, interviewees coming to campus for interviews, and parking for new employees on their first day of work. For all the other startup dates, transportation does have a new employee complimentary parking permit, and you can go to their website for more details on them. The second thing we're going to need is your COA. The third thing is we, again, need when you need your codes by, how many codes you would like, and how many uses. So typically we default to just giving you one code with multiple uses, but if you want each person to have their own unique identifying code, then make sure that you note that. In terms of pay structure, we have the pay structure completely broken out on our transportation page on Confluence, and you only get paid for what ends up getting used. And then the last thing is we need to know who is going to be using the codes so that we can confirm that it's a valid business use. Moving on to PCARD and TEC merchant lifts. This also requires a minimum of one week. So this request is typically submitted um, after cards are declined. The cardholders have to call the bank and ask why their card was declined. And if they say that's because the merchant is not allowed, it's restricted, that means that you need to submit a merchant code lift. So in order to do this, you would use the Ask CBO ticket, and then you would let us know what the supplier's name is, the estimated amount of the single transaction you wish to make and or the total cycle limit increase you are requesting. You should also attach an invoice if for the expense if you have one. This isn't always the case. The date range that you need the limit increase for. We always recommend that you at least give the vendor a couple of days or a couple of weeks to make the charge. And if your vendor charges outside of this limit increase range or merchant increase range, then um, they could potentially get declined in the future because the request is no longer in place. If you need the code permanently lifted, you should also mention that to us and we can work with IPPS to get that done as well. And then the last thing is just the business purpose relating to the purchases that you are wishing to make. Now, if you are asking for an exception for a purchase that is typically restricted on one of these two payment methods, you do need to give us one to two weeks notice for these requests. So typical exception requests that we get are fresh flowers that you want to buy on your P card that's normally restricted. But if it's for student programming um, or decor, sometimes IPPS will approve an exception. And that has to occur every single time you're looking to make that purchase. 
We also have to submit gift card requests uh, exceptions if you want to buy gift cards for student programming on your travel and entertainment card. And again, this exception has to be submitted every single time you're going to buy a gift card for student programming on your TEC and needs to be approved before you make the purchase. The third one is if you want to utilize the LIFT program for student programming events. We have more information about this on our transportation page on Confluence. And if you have any questions, you can work with your fiscal contact um, to get more clarification. And then the last most common thing we see Uber Eats codes for student programming events. Uber Eats codes are only allowed for student programming events and for no other event type. We have a little bit of information on our campus entertainment policy page on Confluence. Um, but if you need more guidance, please don't hesitate to reach out to let us know. The second thing we're going to need is the supplier name um, for where you're going to be making this purchase, the estimated amount of your purchase. And something to keep in mind is if you need your total cycle limit also increased, make sure that you note that. Again, we're going to need the invoice if you have one, the date range that you want this exception to be placed for, and the associated limit increase if you need one. And then also we need to know the business purpose of the event these exceptions are related to. Moving on to our next request type, which is honoraria. So honoraria is a specific type of payment for speakers. Um, the requirements are listed out on our Confluence page for honoraria PO and PA differences, but basically it boils down to if it is associated with a lecture, this is how we pay them. It has to be a closed audience. And there are um, dollar amount restrictions depending on your funding source. I have it hyperlinked there on point B that you need to take into consideration. And if you're looking to pay your speaker or performer for your lecturer more than those limits, that's when your honoraria becomes a PA request instead. And you would submit the performance agreement form instead of this ask CBO fiscal form. But other than that, if you're gonna move forward with the honoraria request, you're gonna give us the payee name and email. Your payee cannot be a UC employee. They must get paid for any additional services through HR. So make sure you reach out to HR at least five weeks prior to your event so that you can meet all of the HR um, UC PATH required timeline schedulings. Then we need to know how much you are looking to pay the speaker or performer for the lecture and how many days that they are going to be performing a service. Then um, we also need to know if they want a paper check issued the day of the event or not. If they would like to request this, I need one month notice prior to the event to make that happen. If we don't meet that one month minimum, they're gonna receive their payment to the default method which is going to be issued to the payment method they've registered for in the payment compass slash payment works system. And typically the payees have the options to decide between getting a paper check in the mail, which means they're gonna get a check two weeks after their honorary payment is completely approved. So that's usually two to three weeks after the event takes place. Or if they've signed up for direct deposit, the timeline is a little bit quicker. They're looking at maybe one to two weeks after the performance or service has been performed. Additionally, we need to know the dates of the specific activities, if they're gonna be there, for multiple days and which, what they're going to be doing on each and every single day. We need to know the class or slash lecture that they're going to be speaking as part of. 
or if you have a series program that this honorary is part of, we need to know that too. And finally, we need your COA distribution information. The next type of request we have is budget requests, can be submitted through the Ask CBO fiscal ticket. The turnaround varies depending on what you're asking for and the times of year that you're asking for those requests to be made. And Ling, our fiscal operations manager, and Rachel Harrington, our fiscal analyst, work on these requests together. So the first thing we need is the COA that you're looking for a budget request for. And then we need to know what you're interested in learning about or seeing. So we have a couple of different types of common reports. There's the fund balance report. That report doesn't have any specific costs. It just has totals for you. So that's not going to show you the nitty gritty details. And this is a report that our fiscal operations manager, Ling, usually works on. The colleges do get at least one fund balance report a year for the fall quarter during, and it gets distributed out during winter quarter. The second type of report we have is called the PPM report. This is a cost report and it shows you a breakdown of each and every expense that's posted to your project at a task level. So these are reports that our fiscal analyst, Rachel, typically will work on for the colleges if it's not part of a major reporting that we do annually. If there is specific types of expenses that you are looking for on this cost report, make sure you detail those out or describe them so that we can focus our efforts and really highlight what you're looking to see. Something also to note is we cannot pull reports for specific programming events and projects you're doing unless they have their own designated COA. And you know if something has its own designated COA, if it has its own row on your COA reference guide. And the last type of report we can pull is a telecom report. If you want a telecom report, we need all of the phone numbers that you're interested in learning about and which COA you think it is currently getting billed to. And then just a side note is we do not give out salary reports unless there are specific approved situations. Um, so if you need a salary report, make sure to connect with Ling to see if you qualify to have one. The next type of request we have is if you need a signature for a contract. So this is typically a one to two week turnaround. And you would only use the Ask CBO fiscal form for this if your contract is not part of a performance agreement or PO. So these are typically contracts that are associated with things that we pay via the travel and entertainment card or the P card. So what I need in this ticket is I need you to give me all of the business purpose details for the event, when you need the contract signed for. I need the PDF or document of the contract attached in this ticket. Hospitality and contracts will not accept a web link to sign, so make sure you work with your vendor on that. And then we also need you to attach a completed hospitality contract form which I have hyperlinked in this presentation for you for your use. And this form is required by hospitalities in contracts, their UC department, to make sure they have all of the pertinent information related to your request. So we're gonna go through that form now. So this first part of the form is the contact and fund information. So the requester is gonna be all of your information as the submitter. The fund manager is going to be our fiscal and operations manager, Ling. Please note that Ling is her preferred name and in our fiscal system, she goes by Jing Li. 
So make sure you're using her details there. For index, we're asking you to insert your COA. And then you don't need to worry about the is this federal funds box. We will adjust that for you according to which COA you enter. The second part of the form is the contract value. So you need to break out everything you're buying line by line, itemization. If what you are purchasing is not in this contract value section, you would just use the other line to insert that info. And then if you have additional details that would be relevant for the contract signer to know, you would use that additional details box to enter that there. And then finally, you have the contract details section. And you are interested in that last box there that says, please provide a brief overview of the contract and purpose of the event. And that's where you're going to insert your valid business purpose for your event. You should use our business purpose page on Confluence to see what is an acceptable business purpose. And then just so you have an idea of when to use this form, some past examples of contracts we've signed are agreements with ticket sellers, um, where we buy tickets for different amusement parks, movies, et cetera. We also usually have contracts to sign for restaurant reservations, particularly for end of the year employee celebrations where we have to do a room reservation. We've done campground agreements for overnight student retreats, boat agreements for cruise student programming events, and also, we sometimes pay travel bundle packages in this way. If there is a contract that the travel or vendor you are using um, requires you to sign as part of the purchasing. So that's when they bundle together your hotel, lodging activities, et cetera, and in combination up forth um, into one invoice. And something that's important to note for that is they do need to have a breakdown of what each component charges. Otherwise, we will not be allowed to use them. And then the last example that I have is licensing agreements for movie rights. Um, but there could also be various other situations in which we would use this form. So those are kind of the major categories of request that we see through the Ask CBO fiscal form, but there might be others along the way that we discover we'll need to use the form for, especially if the request that you are asking for does not have its own designated fiscal form on our CBO forms page. The last part of this process is you will go ahead and click the submit button on the services and support page. And after you do that, you should get an email confirmation. And this is an example of what an email confirmation ticket looks like. So it's gonna give you your case number for your form. And then it'll be dash, and then it'll have the subject that you picked in that email title. The next thing you're going to see is that you're going to see all of the different attachments that you attached at the top here. This is an example of an IT request I submitted. So you see my screenshot at the top, but for you all, it will be any invoices or documents that you've attached. And then the bottom part is just going to be the notification that the ticket was opened, and then it'll have the information that you entered in the request description box. Now, um, there are other ways to view your tickets. And how you would do this is you would go to support.ucsd.edu. You would click on the My Stuff tab at the top of the page, select Tickets from the drop down. And then it'll take you to a pop-out, which will list all of your tickets. And then you're gonna click on your relevant ticket. 
And that will show you something similar to a Facebook Messenger or Teams kind of conversation where it has all of the info you need in one place. If you're not seeing your ticket, make sure that you go to the view toggle bar and search through the different types of categories that they have. If you still don't see your ticket, try logging out and back in to see if that works. If not, come back in 15 minutes and see if it populated then. And if you still don't see your ticket, that means that there was a glitch in the ticketing system and you should contact ITS for additional help. What it'll boil down to though, is that your ticket was not submitted and you will need to resubmit. Now, in terms of this individual ticket view, we really recommend that you log into the system and this is how you communicate if you need any follow-up um, to be done on your ticket, if you have questions, things like that. And some of the functions that you have in that ticket view is you can add watchers. So if you want somebody copied in to receive notifications on your ticket, that's how you would do that. For instructions on how to add watchers, you can go to our services and support ticketing page on Confluence and it walks you through both with instructions and a video. You can also ask questions directly to the feed in the ticket, which is how we suggest that you ask your questions instead of responding to the email confirmation. You can follow up, as I said, on the status of your tickets. And if you want to follow up on a ticket or um, your ticket accidentally gets closed, you can also duplicate your ticket once this happens, and that will automatically create a carbon so that you don't have to replicate the details. The only thing that we ask when you do that is make sure that you insert a comment as to why you are duplicating the ticket. Otherwise, we are going to assume that you did that by mistake and automatically close out your ticket. Now, in terms of processing time, so we did go over some deadlines per request, but just so you know kind of the timeline and process. So the first part that we went over already is that you as the college agent has to submit the ticket. We always ask that you be as detailed and provide as much information as possible. The less amount of questions that we have to ask and the less amount of back and forth that we have, will minimize your ticket turnaround. In terms of initial assessment, we do try to give you all updates no later than three to five business days after your ticket has been submitted. So that's about one week. If your ticket requires additional research, we will let you know within that time frame and let you know what your estimated ETA is at that time, if available. And then the last part is after we've addressed your ticket, the ticket will be closed. You will get a confirmation team email saying a solution has been proposed and it will have your ticket number. And you can either accept or reject that solution that is proposed. If you do neither, your ticket will automatically close within five business days. And if you feel that your request was not completed, you will need to duplicate your ticket to reopen it. Additionally, something to note is whenever we ask you questions and tickets, you do need to make sure that you respond to our questions within five calendar days. If you do not, the system auto closes your ticket and you will also need to duplicate it to reopen it. And then the last part is additional resources. So the Ask CBL Fiscal Ticket is just one of many ways that you can get help. And in terms of getting help, this is our kind of decision tree for where you should really start concentrating your efforts. So anytime you have a question, you really should start by navigating to the UCBO Confluence page. 
this page, our teams work vigorously um, to make sure that we thoroughly document any internal policies, procedures, and changes for you so you have an understanding of what you need to do. If the information is not on Confluent, so we recommend you come to our office hours. They are every week on Thursdays from 11 to 12 currently. And the Zoom links are communicated out via our office hour page on Confluence. However, if the dates and times change, we will make sure that Confluence is updated appropriately so you have that information. If you can come to office hours, great. If not, you can submit an Ask CBO fiscal ticket, and then we will let you know if we can address your question via email or if we recommend you setting up a one-on-one -on -one to talk to us about it. If your information, on the other hand, is on Confluence, if you don't have any further questions, there's no need to come to office hours or submit a ticket. But if you do, um, from there, we recommend that you either come to office hours or submit an Ask CBO fiscal ticket to get your questions clarified. And then finally, these are our office hours for the month of February. Uh, February is focused on our demo sessions as part of our continuous training and asynchronous goals. Today was the Ask CBO Fiscal Ticket Demo. Next week on February 9th, we'll be going over the new gift card order form. The week after that, we'll be going over the fiscal transfer ticket. And then what's not on here is February 23rd, we will be going over the new business systems access requests. And that concludes my presentation.